the human heart. Today let's talk about the sign of love, the heart. In this video, you will learn the basic principles about pressure and blood flow, the basic structure, function and anatomy of heart, the three layers of heart muscle tissue, the four chambers of the heart, and finally the four valves of the heart. Now let's talk about the basic principles about pressure and blood flow. First of all, in the heart the blood flows from higher pressure to lower pressure. Similarly, the valves open and close according to these pressure gradients. Now you gotta always remember that the volume equals pressure. Higher the blood volume, higher the pressure. And lower the blood volume, lower the pressure. And finally, contraction increases the pressure and relaxation decreases the pressure. Now that we are done with the basic principles, let's talk about the basic anatomy of the heart. As we all know that heart is a muscular organ which pumps blood through the vessels of your body. Let's try to label the following diagram to get a basic idea of anatomy of heart. Here we have a cross section of a human heart. This is the pericardium, the myocardium, the left atrium, the left ventricle, the right atrium, and the right ventricle. We have the valves, the tricuspid valve, the bicuspid valve, the pulmonary valve, and the aortic valve. We also have the inferior vena cava, the right pulmonary veins, the right pulmonary artery, the superior vena cava, and of course the aorta, and the left pulmonary arteries along with left pulmonary veins. After discussing the basic anatomy of the heart, let's talk about what the cardiac muscle is made of. So, what are the three layers of the heart muscle? The heart is composed of a specialized type of muscle tissue, known as the cardiac muscle. Now, cardiac muscle is a striated muscle that is present only in the heart. The heart muscle is composed of three layers, the outer layer, the middle layer, and the inner layer. The epicardium outer layer prevents excess expansion or movement of the heart. The myocardium middle layer initiates contractions driving the cardiac cycle and the endocardium inner layer lines the cavities and the valves. Cardiac muscle tissue is involuntary and controlled by the autonomic nervous system. Heart tissue is made up of specialized cells called cardiomyocytes and together they are responsible for pumping the heart which we will discuss in a separate lecture of electrical conduction system of the heart. Now that we are done with the cardiac muscle, it's turned for the four chambers of heart. We have an animation on the right for your visual understanding. As we all know, the heart is made up of four chambers. Two upper chambers, known as the left atrium and the right atrium, and of course, the two lower chambers, known as the left ventricle and the right ventricle. There's no fun in explaining that the right heart receives the oxygen poor blood from the body through the pulmonary circulation, and the left heart pumps out the oxygen rich blood to the body through the systemic circulation. It is that simple actually. Now take a look at the diagram again to get a visual image so you can get a better understanding. Now after the four chambers, it's turned for the four valves of the heart. We do have a diagram on the right for your visual understanding. Just like four chambers, there are four valves, one for each chamber of the heart. These valves keep the blood moving through the heart in the right direction. These four valves are called the bicuspid valve, also known as the mitral valve, the tricuspid valve, also known as the right atrioventricle valve, the aortic valve and of course the pulmonary valve. The aortic and pulmonary valves are also known as semilunar valves. The bicuspid valve and tricuspid valve are located between the atriums and the ventricles, whereas the aortic valve and the pulmonary valve are located between the ventricles and the major blood vessels leaving the heart, such as the aorta and the pulmonary artery. We will have a separate lecture on pulmonary circulation and systemic circulation to explain you exactly the entire circuit of the blood flow where you will learn how the deoxygenated blood passes through the lungs via pulmonary circulation to get oxygenated and eventually and ultimately gets pumped out to the rest of the body through the systemic circulation. This concludes our lecture for today. We hope you liked it, share it with your friends and of course thank you for watching. 
If you like this video, please support us by hitting subscribe and of course liking the video. Now we try our best to upload new videos several times a week, so if you want to be notified and stay up to date, do click the bell icon. And needless to say, you can also comment which video should we record next in the comment section. Best of luck and happy learning.